All right, guys, part two to the exploding Traeger possible solution. All right, guys, as you recall, part one of the exploding Traeger saga ended with my Traeger going to the shutoff mode with a high temperature alarm. Basically, it ran away, got up to 550 degrees. Uh, pretty hot for a Traeger Scout, I'd say. Um, I'd like it if my big Traeger did that. So as you recall, I posted that video about June 8th. And just about eight days later, actually, let me back up, about six days later, I got a surprise package. It wasn't a surprise. Traeger told me they were sending me a new Pro Controller. Um, it looks pretty identical to the last one. I was happy to get it so quickly so that I can uh, continue this saga and give you guys a, uh, a part two report on how it's going. So before we get started, folks, take a minute to subscribe to our channel and then go in the notifications and enable so you don't miss a thing. One thing I wanted to point out is how well it was bubble wrapped and packaged in the box. The only complaint I have, and I haven't called customer service yet to complain about this, and I don't think I will if it works. Um, there weren't no instructions in here at all. It was basically, the bubble wrapped pro controller, a uh, new thermometer, and a new meat probe. What I found is the tools you'll need are basically a small screwdriver, a you know, standard size Phillips, and some wire snips. Um, optional equipment is going to be some, uh, some wiring tools, uh, and I'll have to explain that to you um, at the end if you stick around. So basically I hadn't touched the smoker since we used it last time and it was still full of pellets and some of the soot from its over temperature condition. So a uh, quick cleanup was in order. I emptied out as much of the pellets as I could. I vacuumed out the, uh, the firebox and the um, hopper. And then I went ahead and with the two Phillips screws, I went ahead and took out the controller. And right away I could tell that it was a really tight proposition getting my fingers in there and snipping the wire loom that was zip tied up from the factory. Uh, there just wasn't enough room in there to, to work. Um, so with the standard triggers, you can get up under the hopper or take a little panel off the bottom of the hopper. Uh, no such luck on this particular model of trigger. Um, the, the base, the bathtub, if you will, is all one piece of stamped uh, steel. Uh, so, so I found a way of taking out basically everything from the top. So. It involved loosening up about six screws, the hopper screws and the cook chamber screws, and they're really small. Then there's one big fifth screw right in the bottom of the, of the uh, fire pot. Um, on the older models, you might find that that one's maybe corroded, but uh, mine wasn't. Came right out, piece of cake. Um, so being very careful and just kind of jiggling, finding where things were loose, I, I coaxed it out and I kind of set it on its side, and I was very careful. Um, one thing I did have to do was slip the power cord um, back through, and I had to break the little grommet that keeps it from sliding in and out in order to do that. Um, so I'll probably have to get a new, new one of those. Um, that's in order to give it enough play to set all that, those mechanisms on its side. Be very careful of the electric fans. Watch out for those blades, don't break it. Um, be really careful. So I went ahead and snipped all the zip ties that were in there and I just wanted to do a quick comparison side by side of the old controller and the new controller and make sure all the wires are the same and so far so good. So essentially at this point um, I had initially decided that I wasn't going to replace the temperature probe for the cook chamber. Now that I had taken all that stuff out, it seemed like it was pretty accessible. So again, just being very careful, moving things sideways and just trying to jiggle things around, being careful not to bend anything. Um, I was able to fish that temperature probe out and then fish a new one right back in. Now there's two little screws on the controller that um, have these little flat square tabs where that temperature probe goes into so be very careful because you're actually working on the PC board at this point um, it's the only part of this job where you're actually screwing around with that board so be careful about it um, I took that bubble wrap and kind of set it up on its side and 
took care, just you know, not break anything. So the next thing I needed to do was undo all the, the factory connections and that's where that little small tiny screwdriver came into play. There's a little tab in there and you just, if you find it, if you just slip it into the side a little bit and then pull at the same time, they come right out. So then from here on out, it was just a matter of reconnecting everything and then carefully zip tying everything back up and putting everything back together. Now I did have one little issue. I found a little yellow bonding strap. Uh, I call them bonding straps. Um, it, it's really, uh, it's a grounding wire that connects the motor, which is free floating in a little bracket to another ground. Not a big deal. It looked like it was just a soldered connection that uh, couldn't take the strain while I was jiggling everything around. So I just basically um, put a pigtail on it, put a little bit better connector on there and uh, found a better spot for it uh, where I can get to it easier. So then once I double checked all the connections and I went ahead and very carefully just put everything back into this bathtub that I call it, the case of the smoker essentially. And then once all that was in, I reinstalled the Pro Controller and now we're ready to give it a go. Before you get started on this job, practice basic electrical safety. Make sure that the trigger is unplugged whenever you're working on this thing and just make sure all your wires are nice and tight, snug before plugging it back in. Now, again, the trigger customer service indicated to me I had an older manual and which said to keep the lid closed during startup. Well, that's wrong. The tech support corrected me, indicating that for the first two minutes of the smoke setting, you leave it open. So what we're gonna do right now is go to the smoke setting for two minutes. So I got good power and I'm gonna go to smoke and count up to two minutes. Now one of the things I'm gonna take advantage of this two minutes after replacing the Pro controller here is I'm gonna listen for any ticking noises, any wires that might've got stuck next to a fan or anything like that. Uh, listening to the auger, uh, it sounds like it's turning just fine. So, so far, so good. Also, this first two minutes is also a good time to check your, your thermometer here for your controller. When you first turn it on, it should be within 10 degrees of ambient outside temperature, and ours was. Okay, it's been two minutes, so we're going to go ahead and close it down. And I'm going to go ahead and throw the latches, just to give it that much better snugness. Okay, all we've been waiting for now is to see that combustion has occurred, and it has, so we're going to set it to smoking temperature. Okay, so we're going to set it to my favorite temperature, which is 250, and we're going to see what happens. Let's uh, cross our fingers. Okay, I wanted to stop right here and show you it got up to about 415, now it's 418. It seems to be hovering right in this little area. It's not climbing anymore, but it's not going back down to 250 either. So I'm gonna give it another five minutes before I attempt that reset. All right guys, as you can see, it's dropped down much closer to my target temperature of 250 this time. Um, it went to 418, uh, 415, 418 momentarily, and then just not as fast as it took to get up there, because you know, it's got to cool off and all, but it slowly made its way back down to 250. Um, it's been about 10 minutes, so I didn't have to resort to the quick shutdown cycle back to 250 trick that they told me about over the phone but what they did say is it should be within 10 degrees of your target temperature you know I get it these pellet grills aren't perfect maybe there should be a little bit more variance but right now let's see it's 13 degrees off 250 and it's cooling down and I'm gonna keep watching it now all I got is time right now and uh, well now it's 230 so I'm gonna watch it a little bit longer here and see what happens All 
All right, guys. So it's damn near 100 degrees above the set temperature of 250. It was hovering at 425 actually at one point. It's down to 350. Now it's closer to 300 now. You know, nothing to me can explain even after replacing a controller that Traeger says should solve this issue and the thermometer that is installed. I changed them both out and it's doing the same thing. It's fluctuating. I could see if it finds 300 degrees and stays there or 350. It's not even finding the wrong temperature. It's going anywhere from 215 to 425 and back again. I'm not sure how to explain that. I think maybe it's more of a mechanical issue this time. Um, and I'm at a loss for words now. So what do you guys think of this situation? What would you do? Give now, and I want to say this was a gift. I don't want to return it, but I definitely want to get this thing working. So why don't you guys recommend a solution? Maybe there's a controller by another manufacturer that would work better for this Trigger Scout. I don't know. So I'm going to reach out to you guys to tell me what you think I should do. And maybe I'll incorporate that fix into a future video and give you guys a shout out if it works. If it don't work, well, I'm going to send you a bill. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this show. If you did, and I'm sure you did, if you didn't, I'd like to know why you didn't, besides the funky music I play once in a while. Smash that subscribe button, hit that bell so you don't miss a thing, and we'll see you on the next one.